Welcome into Bill George Arena for tonight's doubleheader here. Oklahoma Panhandle State coming to town to face off against the John Brown Golden Eagles. Big stakes are on the line for both games. The JBU women trying to find a way to break into the Sooner Athletic Conference tournament picture while the men still in play for a regular season conference title. They'll need wins tonight to make it happen. We'll get ready here to go live in about 20, 20, 25 minutes here with our full coverage of the game. Tip off for the women's game about 30 minutes away. But go ahead here now and enjoy our pregame that we prepared. I'm on there as well as Jessica Oldnettle. We cover both games as well as recap what happened Saturday against Southwestern Christian. Just kick back, relax, enjoy it, and I'll be back in about 20 minutes. Welcome to another edition of the Golden Eagle Pregame Show. I'm Maury Phillips. And I'm Jessica Oldenettle. Today we will get you up to speed on JBU's basketball Saturday afternoon contest with Southwestern Christian. Then we will preview what lies ahead for John Brown tonight when Oklahoma Panhandle State comes to town. First, let's start with the JBU women and their game from the other night. On Saturday, Southwestern Christian came to town from Bethany, Oklahoma. The JBU Golden Eagles came into this two games back from the Langston game for the last spot in the Sooner Athletic Conference Tournament. With five games left on the conference schedule, they really needed a win here. JBU played SU very close in the first half, actually leading after the first quarter, 11 to 10, and then put up a very respectable second quarter. And despite surrendering the lead with a couple of minutes left, they still went into the locker room down by a very manageable two points by a score of 26 to 24. It was a very manageable deficit, and JBU had held one of the most high-powered offenses in the conference to just 26 points. But SCU came right out of the gate in the third firing in all cylinders. As a result, JBU had to dig themselves out of a large deficit that got as large as 16 points in favor of Southwestern Christian. However, JBU made it interesting and ended the third and fourth quarters, or started on the fourth quarters, I should say, on a scoring run led by Haley James and Tara Stevens. They actually cut the lead to three points, but SCU was able to get just enough breathing room to get the game back into their hands. SCU improved to 17-7 and overall and 9-7 and in conference with the win. Here's what head coach Jeff Sordequist had to say about the Golden Eagles after the game. Yeah, you know, there was that stretch there in the second half where we let them get the lead and, uh, you know, kind of build their lead, and that, that was the problem right there. And then we did some good things. I thought the, the second quarter, we got we did, we weren't attacking them. We were playing out in front of their defense, and we weren't attacking them. I thought they did a good job of attacking us. I thought, you know, did, we did a lot of good things defensively today. They're, they can score a lot of points, but we, uh, we've got to do a uh, – um, uh, you know, we just had that stretch there where we let them extend that lead, and then now, now we're fighting all the way back to, to get back. So what are your thoughts on this game? JV played much better against SU this time around than last, but in some ways it was more of the same problems, especially shooting the ball, as they only shot 32.1% from the field. I think just like in many games this season, JBU's fire died out in the second half of the game, which caused SCU to gain some ground and made it a hard fight for JBU to get back towards the, the last quarter. Fortunately for John Brown, Langston got annihilated on Saturday against number five Wayland Baptist by a score of 108 to 53, which meant JBU did not lose any ground in the race for the last spot in the conference tournament. And then seventh place Sagu, they lost to Science and Arts. So technically, John Brown's only two games back from the seventh seed. They could potentially, if they played their cards right, get all the way up to that spot. But here are the standings as of right now. Heading into tonight, OCU is still in first in the conference at 25-0 and 16-0 in conference play. They have some tough tests still on their schedule, but the Stars are in prime position to snag a number one seed for the conference tournament. Number five, Whalen, may be the only team that can stop the Stars at this point as they're second in the conference, and their only conference loss was on the road against OCU in November. All eyes will be on their rematch on the 27th in Plainview. Science and Arts is third in the conference and likely has reached their ceiling in terms of seeding for the tournament. But Mac U and Southwestern Christian are still close behind them in fourth and fifth place and could snag the number three spot in the standings should the Drovers falter. Texas Wesleyan's spot in the conference tournament is firmly entrenched, while Sagu and Langston need a couple of wins on their end with losses on JBU's end to clinch it. Central Christian is not mathematically eliminated, but it would take a near miracle being three games back to make a run while Panhandle State is mathematically eliminated from the conference tournament contention. So that is a lot to take in, but simply put, JBU is in a very tough spot. Every game from here on out can be seen as a must win, starting with Panhandle State tonight. What does the mindset have to be for JBU considering a win would take them to only one game back from the loser of Sagu Langston tonight? The biggest thing that should be weighing on JBU's mind is coming into the game with a high intensity from minute one to the last second. 
We'll discuss the Panhandle State game in greater detail later on in the show, but now let's recap the JBU men's game against Southwestern Christian on Saturday. SCU came into this one in a similar situation to the JBU women, as the SCU men are also on the bubble for a Sooner Athletic Conference tournament spot. Going in, they were only a game above the cut line, and a Langston win would have tied them up for the last spot in the tournament. Meanwhile, JBU needed a win to stay in the running for a regular season conference title. The game followed a similar pattern to the Langston game from two weeks ago, as both teams played very sloppy brands of basketball in the first half. Neither offense really got much going, and both teams kept their physicality and edge going defensively. They prevented the offenses from gaining many opportunities for success. JBU was on top of the half, but SCU was actually carrying much of the momentum going to the locker room as they overcame a double-digit deficit to cut it to six. It was 29-23 JBU. However, the second half was almost entirely different from the first. JBU shot 72% from the field in the second half of play, and SCU shot at 65%. Big second halves from Denzier Carnes, Luke Harper, and Kyrie Hutchings gave John Brown the edge, but the Eagles were never entirely out of it. Southwestern Christian cut it down to a three-point ball game from Adarius Madkin, three-pointer with an eight minutes and 48 seconds left in the second half. JBU, though, was able to go on an 8-0 run that got the lead up to double digits. The game was a bit of a back-and-forth tug-of-war, just not a particularly close one for the rest of the way. JBU gave up some leverage every now and then, but never gave up so much that Southwestern Christian was entirely back in the game. Ira Perrier put the stamp on this one with a monster one-handed slam. Here's the call from our own Carter Henson. Nice feed from Harper, and then Perrier just does it all himself. Throw it down, Mr. Perrier. You had the Carnes one-handed slam earlier, and then that, that one from Perrier. That one might have actually beat Carnes. Perrier saying good night right there with the slam, and JBU takes the win 85-68. to Denzier Carnes led with 27 points, while Luke Harper added 23. They advanced to 23 and 3 overall and 14 and 2 in Sooner play, while SCU fell to 13 and 11, 6 and 10 in Sooner. Nothing really changed for either team though as MacU defeated Texas Wesleyan on Thursday night to stay in first place in the conference, while the Eagles from Bethany breathed a sigh of relief as Langston lost to Wayland as well, keeping them a game above the cut line. Here's what coach Jason Beshta had to say after the game. Yeah, just, you know, they, they did a great job of coming back here, and we couldn't seem to extend that, that lead that we have. They thought they did a great job ending the first half, keeping it close. Um, and then they, they came right back as we kind of pushed it out again early in that second half. And so what's great to see is our response then to that, is those are the easy ones to fold. And I think that's where this year we've just done a tremendous job of game after game of not letting that get to us. Moving on to, to focus on this play instead of worried about the last play and, and, and playing more with that mentality. Uh, I thought we made some big stops. And, you know, we didn't shoot the ball well at all in the first half. I think we were 4 of 17 from 3. We go 6 and 9 in the second half. Um, Denzier really took, and, and Luke, I think, really took us on their backs for a while there. And they just didn't seem to have an answer for those guys um, on their end. That was a big win there for JBU. They've come out on top in a lot of their recent games but they haven't had one that was quite as convincing in several weeks. Although our Eagles have been on a high recently, this game really let them be comfortable and even gave players like Nathan Stoll some playing time and Ira Perrier some star plays. I also really feel like just beyond the score, this one was huge for momentum with all the big plays we saw, especially the Perrier dunk to quiet down a SU team that was really going at them all game long. Carnes and Perrier really showed their ability on the court with the SCU game and gave themselves some standout moments in that game. This one definitely inspired, inspired more confidence and raised morale in that locker room with the win. We'll go ahead now and take a break and then come back and discuss the Oklahoma Panhandle State Games coming up tonight. We knew that trying to start a new Christian radio station today would require doing things very differently. So we set out to change everything about Christian radio. Cheesiness? Gone. Expectations for perfection? Gone. The same five songs, gone! Seriously, we just blew it all up and started over. We got real. Real FM is a place for authenticity. We play a mix of alt pop and hip hop music. And honest, in-depth conversations about what it means to be a Christian today. Listen today. Listen right now. 
You can listen. Stop to what me. you're doing and listen. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the one. <laughs> Welcome back to the Golden Eagle pregame show. I'm Maury Phillips alongside Jessica Oldnettle. We recently recapped the Southwestern Christian games that took place last Saturday. Now let's talk about the Panhandle State game tonight, first for the JBU women. The Oklahoma Panhandle State Aggies come to Bill George from Goodwill, Oklahoma. The Aggies have struggled all season long as they are currently last in the Sooner Athletic Conference. The last time the Golden Eagles played them was on January 25th when they won by a score of 69 to 56. Here's what Coach Sardiquist had to say about the Aggies and what to look for in this game. Yeah, I mean, they're a scary team. It was a close game down there for a while, and then we kind of pulled away from them there in the fourth quarter. Um, you know, they really drive the ball well. They, um, they, they're one of those teams that can shoot the three well. They're kind of streaky. They, they've had some bad games where they haven't shot it well, but then they've had some games that they've really shot it well. And so we're going to have to do a better job than we did tonight of, of handling dribble penetration. Um, they're really going to drive on us, and um, and then we've got to and we've got to do a good job of executing on offense. So Oklahoma Panhandle State doesn't really have a whole lot to play for right now, so they're mathematically eliminated from making the conference tournament this year, but they'll still be motivated. It's a road game. They'll want to go get a win in Bill George. What do you expect to see from them tonight? I definitely think we're going to see um, some motivation and intensity from the Aggies tonight. And uh, although they're out of the tournament, I think that they're definitely going to want to maybe knock us down a couple pegs, and I think we may see some intense play from them tonight. Meanwhile, JBU, they need a win. They will be only one game back from Langston or Sagu with the W, but what are some keys to here to ensure that that happens for them? JBU needs to stay focused and make sure their defense is ready to fight. There's no doubt that Jordan Martin and Sarah Williams can shoot, but if Ops U is shooting just as well, we'll need a tough defense to come out with the win. So who would you like to see on JBU's and really step up here tonight? We've seen some great games from Taylor Fergan, and she's really starting to become arguably their best all-around player in the lineup. I'd also like to see more here from Marta Matamala as last few games we just haven't seen a whole lot from her. Only 5.8 points per game and about 24 points per game over about the last couple of weeks. And she's one of their best long-range shooters, but who are you looking at to make a big impact? I'm definitely looking at freshman Tara Stevens to put up some points and potentially some game-winning plays. She has proven herself on the court all season, specifically in the last few games in BGA, and I see her future being very bright on this team. We'll go back to this game later on when we make our picks for today's slate of games. But now let's preview the JBU men's game against the Opsu Aggies. The Aggies swept the season series against JBU last year, but as of now, they are just looking to end the season on a high note. They are mathematically eliminated from contending for a spot in the Sooner Athletic Conference Tournament. JBU has already played them this season, having beaten them at the Oscar Williams Fieldhouse on January 25th by a score of 94 to 68. Here's what John Brown head coach Jason Besha had to say about Panhandle State going into tonight's ball game. Yeah, and you know they they gave us a tough one at their place. Uh, they've got some tough matchups with the way that they play, and uh, they've got some guys who, especially the last several games, have been really scoring it more and more. And I think they're playing better and playing with uh, some more confidence. And and we've been telling our guys all season long, and it's certainly not going to be any different going into this game. But you know we're going to play a team that's you know had a rough season, and here we are ranked you know a top ten team and having a great season. This is a big one for them too. So we've got to always remember we've got a target on our back. And you know this is one of those that can kind of make you feel good on your season if you're ha if you're them if you can go ahead and knock off a top team, and so we've got to just continue to be who we are because um, who we are is enough against whoever we're playing, and we just need to be really solid in, in, in those things that we do and in, uh, in, in our practice this next week and, and try to sure up a couple things that we need to do better um, and be ready to go to to kind of finish out with a really strong homestand. In my opinion, this game has a lot of the same makeup as the Crowley's Ridge game back in December. JBU was undefeated at the time, and the Pioneers were the final game on their non-conference schedule. JBU had previously dominated them when they were here for the TP game, but when they went on the road, the Pioneers scored the upset win. It was their first against a top 25 team in the NAIA in their program's history. It was huge for them, and while they're far from competing for a championship this season, that was really the highlight of their year, and I can see Panhandle State coming in with kind of that same mentality. So with all of that said, what does the message have to be from Coach Beshta tonight? Coach Beshta needs to light a fire in his players as OpsU is coming in in the hopes of another win. Our Golden Eagles need to learn from their last game and remember the faults that Oklahoma Panhandle State found in them in their defense in order to stop OpsU from the beginning and keep, their play, keep playing to their full potential and not play down to the level of their opponents. 
Obviously, you struggled in almost every facet of the game this year, but their biggest strength is forcing turnovers, especially in the steals department. They have multiple players that rack up the steals for them, particularly DK Sumo and Jalen Williams. But how important is it for guys like Rokas Grabliowskis and Kyrie Hutchings to hold on to the ball and control the passing lanes at the one? Both Hutchings and Grabliowskis are great ball handlers but they can often get a little too ambitious at the wrong times in hopes of making big plays. It'll be important for both players as well as the whole team to play strong and smart and not try to show off, especially considering the last game against this team. Securing the win should be their mentality. I think tonight we'll see a big game from Denzier Carnes as he's one of those guys with a huge size advantage. The Aggies don't have much size on the floor for him. Their tallest player is six foot six. This makes a big matchup advantage in the paint for guys like Carnes and Quentin Bailey. But since Carnes is the bigger scoring threat, i got to give the edge to him as the impact player tonight. Who do you think brings it for John Brown? While Carnes has had some great few games, I'm looking to Kyrie to bring some shots from the three-point range. He has definitely utilized this, his time while playing on the court, and I foresee him having another great scoring game. Going in, JBU is a game back from first place in Sooner Athletic Conference standings from MACU. Let's take a quick look at the standings, and then we'll discuss what is going on here in further detail on the Golden Eagle pregame. Number two, Mac U is the leading the conference going into tonight with their lone loss on the season coming to JBU at Bill George. They have Oklahoma City tonight at home, so it will be a game to keep an eye on. John Brown is ranked number nine nationally, and while Sagu and Texas Wesleyan have spots in the top 25 and are both likely going to Kansas City in March, Wayland Baptist might be on the NAIA tournament bubble at this point, but their spot in the conference tournament is not in question. However, the last three spots all have the same conference record as SCU, Science and Arts, and Oklahoma City are 6-10. and 10. Langston is only a game back at 5-11, and 11, but they have a tough draw tonight in number 15, Sagu. Central Christian is two games back at 4-12, and 12, while Panhandle State is in last and mathematically eliminated from conference tournament contention. Coach Bester, he's been very big on living in the present, though, and not looking too far ahead into the future. The conference tournament and eventually the national tournament will all come in due time given their 23-3 and record. They're practically locks for both. But what needs to be the mentality here considering that there's a lot on the line regarding their seating in the conference tournament and potentially the national tournament later down the line? Just like Coach Beshta said, the team needs to have a mentality that focuses on each game as they come. We need to see a lot of intensity from JBU as the conference placement depends on these next few games. And lastly, what are the keys to the game here tonight? The Golden Eagles have a lot of power on their team with players like Carnes, Hutchings, and Bailey. JBU needs to use that power and intensity that we have seen from them in every single game from here on out. This will be a key factor in, the, in these next few games. We'll go ahead now and make our picks here tonight. First for the women's game, who do you have in this one? I think that while the OPSU women are more polished than the men, I have to give the edge here to JBU. I think the sense of urgency will be there for the Golden Eagles. And they just have more firepower offensively than the Aggies, who aren't really just a very good offensive team. I'll take JBU by about 10, maybe 15, to stay in the hunt for a conference tournament spot. I agree. I think JBU has the fire that will be necessary to take the win on this game. I think this will be a 12-point game between JBU and OPSU. Now on the men's side, I think it'll be fairly close starting out, as I'm not entirely confident that the Golden Eagles will come out firing immediately on offense. They haven't been over the last couple weeks. They've kind of started slow. Uh, but I do think JB, they will start to distance themselves later on and really outpace the Aggies. I have John Brown, but considering the margin of victory, I think it will largely resemble more of a non-conference game than a conference game based off of that. There's no doubt in my mind that JB can pull out the win with this game as they are prepared to fight, considering their last few overtime games. They will bring an intensity from the beginning that I don't think the Aggies be, will be able to match. We'll see how these picks hold up after tonight. Any final thoughts here before we conclude this pregame? I think tonight's games will really be a great push towards the conference tournament from both JBU teams, and we'll get to see some power plays from both men's and women's teams. Thanks, and that will do it here for the Golden Eagle pregame. I'm Ori Phillips. And I'm Jessica Oldenettle. Enjoy the games. Welcome into Bill George Arena for tonight's doubleheader here between the John Brown Golden Eagles and the Oklahoma Panhandle State Aggies. We'll get ready here for some women's basketball tip-off in about five to ten minutes. I'm Maury Phillips alongside Carter Henson and Carter. This game's got some high stakes for both the men's and women's teams tonight. JBU, the women, they're looking for a spot in the conference tournament, and the men may be looking to raise their seating a bit come time for the conference tournament as well. Yeah, Ori, this is a very winnable game This in the uh, early game here for the JBU women. 
OPSU, they came in 0-17 in conference, but honestly, as we found out in the Sooner Athletic, you never want to underrate anybody. You always want to bring your absolute A game to the table every single time. Yeah, it's, gonna, it's been a rough season overall for the Aggies. Neither the men's or women's team have won a conference game, but this is a team that has had success against John Brown in the past. What are you looking for tonight here on the women's game? What does John Brown need to do here to handle business? Well, and uh, Oklahoma Panhandle has played some very close games with a few different teams, and the JBU is going to have to really come out and do what they need to do. The Lady Aggies, they're led by Shea Audrey, and she's their only only player who averages double figures, so it's going to be a lot of shutting her down, making sure that they play very close on her underneath the basket. Very strong, very big player. And then for the Golden Eagles, I mean, they've had some tough times shooting the last few games, have really struggled uh, from deep. So I kind of see, maybe we'll see them go inside a little bit more. Maybe we'll see them work on their outside shot a little bit more. Anyway, our own Zach Walt had a chance to talk to OPSU's own Victor Esparza. He was a longtime assistant there for the Aggies. Now he's in his third season as the head coach. Here's what Coach Esparza had to say about his girls going into tonight. I'm here with Panel State women's head coach, Coach Esparza. Coach, how do you feel your team has improved since you last played uh, John Brown? Well, I don't know. That's kind of hard to say. I mean, we were playing hard still. We just, uh, right now for us, is we just got to figure out how to win some basketball games. Um, you know, the biggest thing for us is we haven't quit. Uh, we've stayed the course. Um, you know, when things have gone hard, uh, it's it's easy to quit, but uh, this group hasn't. And Coach, what's it going to take for you guys to win tonight? Well, for us, is we're going to have to defend for 40 minutes. Um, we got to play hard. we got to have a good mindset. Uh, but it all starts on the defensive end of the floor. If we could defend for 40 minutes, it gives us a really good chance. Uh, you know, John Brown is a really good team. They, they put five shooters on the floor at a time, and... Uh, it puts a lot of pressure on your defense, so we, we got to be able to defend for 40 minutes and, and we'll figure out ways to score. Hey coach, how big would a uh, win on the road be tonight? You know, when you can win on the road in conference, um, it, it's huge. Uh, you know, this group has been working hard. Um, we're still looking for our first conference win, uh, so it would be really, really big for us to be able to win on the road and uh, get our first conference win. Um, just kind of, I guess, give us a little bit of momentum going into the off season. Um, I think that's that's kind of what we're looking for uh, in our last four games here. So it, it would be really good, good for us, big for us, um, and most importantly, it would be a great thing for this group. All right, good luck tonight, Coach. All right, thank you. Appreciate you guys. And ops you mathematically eliminated from conference tournament contention, but they're still looking to come in, get a road win, and be huge for the team. They haven't won a game since January 23rd. That was against Macomb. They're coming off of a 57 to 100 loss to Wayland on Tuesday night. Now let's see what Jeff Sardiquist had to say here. Our own Zach Wolt did also get a chance to talk to him. Right here with Coach Sardiquist. Coach, what kind of challenge does Panhandle State pose tonight? You know, they do a really good job of driving to the basket. We're going to have to really defend tonight and not let them penetrate and get deep into the paint. We've got to keep them out of the paint. And they're streaky three-point shooters, right? They're, they're kind of the ones where they had games where they miss a lot, but then they have had games where they've hit a lot of threes. So we've got to guard the three-point line also. How big is going to be a three-point game tonight? Yeah, I think it's going to be really big. Um, you know, we need to be able to hit our shots. We've, we've, we've struggled the last two games. So we've got to get back hitting our shots right there. And then you know, we've got to do a good job of defending them. Coach, what is it going to take to come out on top against Van Handel tonight? I think we've got to play at a different speed. They're, they're going to play very quick, um, uh, and we've got to play at that speed and not walk around, or, or sometimes we can get where we're, we're not uh, playing at a very quick speed. Good luck tonight, Coach. All right, thank you. So both teams here needing a win. JB, you really fired up here tonight, trying to stay in conference tournament contention. Carter, any final thoughts here before we take it down to the court? Yeah, I think this is a very winnable game for the Golden Eagles. And I mean, one that they need. They've had some really close games. They had a really hard fought game against Matthew last week, a few weeks ago, and uh, a few other really close games that have finished really tight. So I'd like to see the Golden Eagles. I think they'll get a win here. I think it'll be a tough one, but I do think they came away with it. We'll see what happens. We'll now take it down to the court for the pregame festivities. We'll be back in about three or four minutes to bring you the tip off of today's game.
Good evening, basketball fans. Welcome to Bill George Arena on the campus of John Brown University in Salem Springs, Arkansas for tonight's Sooner Athletic Conference basketball action featuring the visiting Aggies of Oklahoma Panhandle State University and your John Brown Golden Eagles. JBU, the Sooner Athletic Conference and the NAIA embrace the five core values of the Champions of Character Initiative, which are respect, responsibility, integrity, servant leadership, and sportsmanship. Please join with us to create a positive environment for everyone to enjoy. Before we meet the starting lineups, we invite you to please stand if you are able, and gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin tonight's event with the invocation, led by Athletic Director Robin Doherty. Then we ask that you remain standing as we honor America with the playing of the Star Spangled Banner. Let's pray. Father, we pause now to acknowledge your presence. Thank you for another day another opportunity. Thank you for safe travels for OPSU last night, Lord. Just pray for your protection over all the players today, Lord. May they play to the best of their ability. Lord, most importantly, we thank you for your son and the salvation through him. In Jesus' name, amen. And now it's time for our starting lineups. First for our visitors from Goodwell, Oklahoma. At guard, a 5'7 junior from Barcelona, Spain, number 11, Laura Moya Demers. At forward, a 5'11 junior from Townsville, Queensland, Australia, number 14, Kasia McCaskill. At forward, a six foot senior from Mesquite, Texas, number 23, Nadia Hayes. At guard, a 5'4 junior from Guymon, Oklahoma, number 30, Naomi Rodriguez. And at forward, a 5'9 freshman from Stratford, Texas, number 31, Shea Audrain. Head coach for the Aggies is Victor Esparza. He's assisted by Denise Levine and Raheem Gregory. Get on your feet, it's game time in Bill George Arena, and these are your John Brown Golden Eagles. At guard, a 5'10 sophomore from Madrid, Spain, number one, Marta Matamala. At guard, a 5'7 senior from McKinney, Texas, number two, Sarah Williams. At guard, a 5'5 junior from Republic, Missouri, number four, Taylor Fergan. At guard, a 5'9 senior from Bentonville, Arkansas, number 12, Jordan Martin. And at forward, a 5'11 freshman from Wyandotte, Oklahoma, number 34, Tara Stevens. And coach for the Golden Eagles is Jeff Soderquist. He's assisted by Vaughn Eschner. Your officials tonight are Wes Cyrus, Steve Searles, and Mark Eubanks. 
Welcome into Bill George Arena here for the first of tonight's double headers here. Oklahoma Panhandle State coming to town out of Goodwell, Oklahoma. If you're from that area and tuning in, we thank you for watching and hope you enjoy the game. And this is a crucial game here, though, for the John Brown Golden Eagles. Still a couple games back from conference tournament contention, but Lanks and Sagu both play tonight. So with a win, John Brown would move one game back from the loser of the Sagu Langston game tonight here. Alongside Carter Henson, I'm Maury Phillips. We'll get ready to tip off any second now. Players are at the court, ready to go. It's going to be Hayes versus Tara Stevens for the tip. And Panhandle State wins the tip off. They move from right to left on your screen in their red jerseys. And John Brown moves from left to right with their white home jerseys. Three-pointer up and no good there. John Brown gets the rebound. That's Jordan Martin on the board. Sarah Williams, she'll take it back up. The Golden Eagles going into tonight, 8-17, and 4-12 in conference. Panhandle State is 5-21, and 0-17 in Sooner play. Looking for their first conference one here this evening against John Brown. Stevens, she has it. She'll move it. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. Sarah Williams, screened by Stevens. Fergan, she'll try to take it inside. And Oklahoma Panhandle State, they get a defensive stop. They got it to go down to four, and then they get the block there. Three-pointer there, she did not take it. Pass all the way back there inside, drive. And that's off the mark. Stevens with the rebound. And looks like John Brown already wants to take a timeout. Minute in, Coach Sardiquist wants to talk about it. So Carter, this is a huge game for John Brown. We already talked some in the pregame about their plan of attack, but if you're paying Hendel State, what can you utilize in this one? What are some weaknesses John Brown has that you can look to exploit? Well, JB has struggled to shoot deep a lot of times this year. I mean, they've struggled to really shoot at all in certain scenarios. You really like to see Oklahoma Panhandle kind of force that ball outside to make them take those tough shots, even though uh, JBU does have some people that can knock the three down. They have kind of struggled from that this year. Martin to inbound off the timeout. No score after about a minute of play. We'll see if JBU changes that on this possession. Fergan will take it up. Passes it to Matamala. There's Martin in the corner. Look for Matamala on the inside, decided not to take it. There's Fergan, they'll kick it to Martin on the inside, back out to Fergan. 10 seconds left on the shot clock, Stevens. Williams, she'll drive in. Martin, left corner, three is up, and it is no good there on the rebound is McCaskill. It's a good look for the Golden Eagles, though. They get her wide open on the outside. They'll say she stepped on the line there. That's Golden Eagle basketball. Neither team a minute 30 in has gotten a shot up and in. This time Sarah Williams will take it up. Inside Tara Stevens. Fergan over back to Stevens. She heads it on the left. Inside Fergan. She looks to go in, drive it in, shoot it. No good. And I think she'll be. Going to the line here for a couple. Drew the contact. That's going to be on Moya Demures. That will send Taylor Fergan to the free throw line. She's a 73.1% free throw shooter this year, 49 for 67. First one is up and in, so John Brown strikes first. Makes her second, hits them both, and John Brown is the early two-point advantage. Took almost two minutes for the team to finally score. OPSU now looking to answer. Rodriguez for three, long three off the mark. Martin, she corrals the rebound. Matamala inside, Jordan Martin. Out Fergus, she drives inside, pump fakes, and Nice look there by Martin, even better one, Matamala for three, and it is in. So John Brown now off to the early five-point advantage off that Martin Matamala three-point bucket. Panhandle State now looking to answer. Yeah, JB moved the ball really well on that one, really calm on, around the arc and made passes until they found that open shot. And a lot of times it's the pass that leads to the pass. They 
really connected those together now at the open shot. Meanwhile, Panhandle State has just struggled to get anything going there off the turnover. John Brown has it back. Tara Stevens looking to pass it around. There's Martin, right side, takes a mid-range shot. It's off the mark. But three minutes in, and Panhandle State has been held scoreless by this John Brown defense. Drive inside, they'll kick it out, Rodriguez. Fergan covering, that'll go back out. Just passing it around, getting some movement. 10 seconds on the shot clock, Sarah Williams playing some defense there. They can't get a shot either. That's the Muir's on the shot. Fergan out, Sarah Williams. And they catch her walking there, so had a chance there, a nice look for a three. Instead, she tries to drive it. And takes a step. So Panhandle State will get the ball back. Allie Teague goes into the game for the first time tonight, replacing Jordan Martin. Aggies, meanwhile, over three minutes in, they don't have a single point. Yeah, the Golden Angels playing some really good defense so far. They're in this zone, not really allowing them to get to, or they've switched it, switched it to more of a man, but. And they get some points on the board there. It's by McCaskill, and then they go back down the floor here. John Brown inside Stevens. Three-pointer by Sarah Williams up, and it goes through, and let's see what the call is here. Looks like they'll count the basket and call a foul after the shot, so JV gets the ball back there. Prime opportunity here to increase their lead. Panhandle State, meanwhile, bringing in Kaylee Morgan for the first time tonight. Fergan to inbound. Baseline. Out to Sarah Williams. Fergan, she'll just drive inside. There's Allie Teague, right corner three. No good there, and Fergan tried to go and get the rebound. She had the last touch. It'll be Panhandle State basketball. Down six here, just under four minutes in. Or this is looking like some vintage Golden Eagles 3 and D ball. They're really shooting, though, getting those three-point shots up. And they're really moving the ball really well in order to get there. Rodriguez pass out. Audrain over and pass intended for Kaylee Morgan. Goes out of bounds. Another turnover by Panhandle State. We'll see if John Brown can make anything of it. Taylor Fergan, she'll take it up. Screen by Stevens, frees her up. She'll drive inside, Great gets move. it over Rodriguez and in. Off the dribble move, and John Brown has a commanding eight-point lead. Yeah, a bit of a Euro step there uh, underneath the basket for Tara Stevens. She saw a whole bunch of space in front of her. She took advantage of it. Three-pointer there up. No good by McCaskill. Rebound by Fergan. They're going to take it up the court pretty quickly here. Out Williams. She has a nice look there. Three-pointer off the mark. Allie Teague almost got the offensive board, but instead it goes the way of Audrain. Panhandle State back down the floor. Drive in. Great pass. Nice feed inside, and now Panhandle State on the board again. Down six, about halfway into the first quarter. Yeah, picture perfect pass from Kaylee Morgan there, kind of a no-look pass under the basket to get it to Hayes, or rather that was Laporal. Matamala, inside pass, Allie Teague. There's Stevens wide open in the left corner. She'll take the three and it's in. So John Brown now almost at double digits and we're not even out of the first quarter yet. Panhandle State, they need to answer back here offensively. Now look at Allie Teed finding that open, open shooter on the outside. They drew the attention inside. Found Sarah Stevens on the outside. Audrain pass over Rodriguez. She'll take the three with Fergan covering. It's no good there, rebound. Looks like that's going to be a foul there on Panhandle State. It's going to be on La Porro. And Panhandle State here going to take the timeout real quick. 4.21 left in the first quarter, and it's been all JBU 13 to 4. Carter, what does Panhandle State need to look here to do? What does Coach Esparza need to tell his girls right now? Well, I mean, they're getting some open threes. They just can't knock him down. They're 2 of 8 from the field, and they're 0 of 4 from downtown. Honestly, getting the ball inside has worked a little bit better. They've All four of their points are from the inside, and the last pass came from a really nice dish from Kaylee Morgan. So maybe they try to drive in a little bit more than they had been. Not really working too well from outside. 
We'll see what they can do here. JBU, meanwhile, off the timeout, they will get first crack at things. Fergan takes it across. Panhandle State needs a defensive stop. Fergan, she'll drive in, shoots it up, and it's in. So John Brown already 11-point lead, and we've just now reached six minutes in. They'd be pretty much storing at will at this point in time. Shot up, and Panhandle answers back, but it's still a nine-point deficit that they have to make up here. They have to get some defensive stops. A nice shot there, though, by Vanessa Gonzalez. Pass out, Matamala. She'll go in. Drives in and just nobody was there really to stop her. So JBU back up by 11. JBU's attacking the basket. They're getting some easy buckets out of it. Morgan pass slingers. They'll kick it back outside. Kaylee Morgan, she wants it, she gets it. Drive in. Near turnover there, but they managed to recover it. But they only have eight seconds to work with. Drive in, Fergan covering and. Three seconds left on the shot clock, offensive Ooh. board, and nice play there. She looks like almost got it a second time, but John Brown was able to get some hands on it. Maddie Altman inside, Haley James, and John Brown will turn it over here off the bobbled pass. Coach Sardiquist now bringing in Jessica Goldman for the first time and bringing back in Sarah Williams. Fergan and Matamala will take a seat. Naomi Rodriguez will also return to the game. Vanessa Gonzalez will take it across the timeline here and Panhandle State down 11. Drive in. Out and they're gonna say she stepped on the line. Unfortunate there for Kayla Morgan. That was a tough play driving the baseline. She saw her teammate open to the corner, just kind of grazed that line. But she's a fun player to watch. She's made some nice passes already in the short time that she's been in. Screen there. Haley James frees her up. She'll go inside. Sarah Williams. Maddie Altman over to Teague. Just looking to see where the right pass might be. They won't get it there as Steele. That's going to be by Vanessa Gonzalez. And she'll just take it in, pass out Morgan. She'll drive in, and Sarah Williams got some contact on it, but they're going to say last touch by the Aggies. It's been all JBU at this point in the game, just over two minutes left. They've got the 11-point lead. Aggies right now needing some defensive stops. Goldman has it left side. She'll move it across. Altman up top, setting up the play here. Frees up Sarah Williams. She'll drive it in. They'll reset. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. Haley James, and that's going to be another steal by Panhandle State, this time by Hannah Bennett, number 32. She'll get it back inside, but the Aggies follow with another turnover. Turnover number four for Panhandle there. And right now, things have just not been going the way of the Oklahoma Panhandle State Aggies. Sarah Williams, she'll take it up. Haley James up top, over to Teague. Panhandle State will get the ball back here. It looks like they're gonna charge Jessica Goldman with the off-ball foul. That is just the first team foul on the Golden Eagles in this entire quarter. Took about a minute 20 left for that to happen. Drive in and can't get the shot to fall. Maybe so, allows less than 10 in this quarter. That's a very successful first Three pointer quarter. up and in by Allie Teague. And we'll see if John Brown can answer here again with another stop. Three up, no good. 45 seconds left, about a 15 second difference between the shot and game clock. Williams, three pointer, 
How about another? It goes in again. So John Brown just commanding this first quarter. Yeah, scoring at will right now, Ori. They're really moving the ball just so well, and they're getting a lot of open shots out of it. Whether it's Sarah Williams, whether it's Allie Teed, whether it's Terry Stevens, that's the 4-3 of the game for the Golden Eagles that they've made. They're shooting very, very well. Panhandle State can get the last shot here if they want, but they're down 17. Three-pointer, no good. Altman gets the rebound. If they can go down quickly, they can get a last shot up. Three seconds, two, one. Williams for three, it's up. It's in, she beats the buzzer, and what a play by Sarah Williams. Shot was off, and John Brown now up 20 after one quarter of play. What a play there by Sarah Williams, and she just dominated that entire quarter. Nine points. All Man. from three-point land, Ori, and Sarah, they, that was a long three. Here's a replay, let's see where he was. She was almost to the tip of the eagle. Bang. Buries it. What a play, Sarah Williams, and what a quarter for the Golden Eagles. I mean, I know they put 26 up in that quarter, but more importantly, they allowed six points in that quarter, quarter Ori. Just locked down on defense. OPSU only three of 15 from the field. I don't think they could have asked for much better. And then you look at John Brown, nine for 13 from the field. Shooting just very efficiently from long range. Great quarters, especially by Sarah Williams. But Marta Matamala, she's got five. Taylor Fergan is four. Tara Stevens is five. It's just been a great group effort. I mean, it's too early to rule out the Aggies yet, but things can get very dire very quickly if they aren't already dire. What is the plan of attack here to really get back into this thing? I mean, you just got to hit shots. And you got to stop the Golden Needles from shooting so well. I mean... JB has had a lot of uncontested threes, and they're really making them. They've made four of them. Got to get some stops if you're the Aggies. John Brown up 20 points here, held Panhandle State to just six points in this first quarter of play. We'll see if they can match it. But right now, John Brown, they need to win to stay in contention for a Sooner Athletic Conference tournament spot. Fergan, she'll take it up. JBU does get a win. They'll only be a game back from the loser of Langston and Sagu tonight. So it's crucial they close things out. Tara Stevens inside. Goldman left corner three. No good. So we'll see if Panhandle State can answer here and pair that stop with a bucket. Ooh. What a move. That goes and... Nice move there by Rodriguez, and now Panhandle State on the board first in the second quarter. Yeah, Broca, the ankles of Jessica Goldman there. Martin, Goldman left open, left side, three-pointer. No good, that goes over the backboard, and Panhandle State will get the ball back. I thought she might have gotten a lucky roll. I don't know if it hit the top or if it just hit the top of the front side, but they say it... Uh, it's the top of the backboard. Three-pointer, Rodriguez up and no good there. Martin, they'll try to take it up a little quicker, but they'll slow things down. Didn't have the numbers advantage. Goldman, she'll pump fake, take it in. Tara Stevens just in front of the free throw line. It rolls its way in there. John Brown back up by 20. Could be a really good game for Tara Stevens. She's Looking pretty confident on the ball. She's making a lot of shots, taking a lot of shots. She's got seven points. Led the team in scoring last Saturday against Southwestern Christian. She had, she had 16 then. Three-pointer no good by Panhandle. And there's just been a lid over that bucket from long distance for them. Haven't made a single shot from three-point range yet. Taylor Fergan passed Jessica Goldman. Jordan Martin out. Fergan open. Left side three-pointer up and... No good there, so after that Sarah Williams buzzer beater, they haven't been able to get things going quite as much from deep in this second quarter. Only two minutes in, though. They're going to bring back in Allie Teague. Goldman will take a seat. And Jordan Martin to inbound from the baseline. 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Inside, Tara Stevens immediately count the basket and the foul. Chance for the three-point play. Yeah, Terry Stevens is another strong take, and she's on the free throw line and looking for point number 10. 
Stevens and Sarah Williams just having great games. Each with nine points in the early going, Stevens can make it 10. Misses the free throw there. JBU, though, still with the 22-point advantage two minutes into the second quarter. And Allie T gets inside there, and Panhandle State, smart move there, forcing the jump. Possession arrow still leaning Panhandle State. They will keep the ball here. Aggies inbound. Looks like John Brown's getting the ball back. That's going to be an offensive foul. They're going to charge that against Naomi Rodriguez. So a costly mistake there is right now, Panhandle State needs anything they can get to get back into this one. And that did not help matters. Tara Stevens, she is at the free throw line. Loses possession of it, still there. Hannah Bennett couldn't come down with the ball though, so they lost their shot at fast break points. Long three-pointer up, and it's in there by Shea Audrain. Nice three-point basket by Heron. 19-point game, John Brown. Those are Audrain's first points of this one. Audrain's the one that really we thought that JB would have to key in on. She's a very good shooter, very good under the basket as well. Just her first basket. Taylor Fergan over T, up top three. No good. I think they're gonna hit Fergan on the foul there. That's just her first personal. John Brown, for the most part, stayed out of foul trouble in the first quarter. They go into this one with a lot of fouls to give. They'll still bring back in Sarah Williams, who had a monster first quarter. Ended it off with that buzzer beater. One of their top plays of the year, I'd say. Long three-pointer, and she's got nine, tied for the team lead. She's back in. We'll see what she can do. Shot there just in front of the free throw line. Audrain, no good. Sarah Williams, she'll take it back up. Jordan Martin over to Matamala. Williams. Out Allie Teague from three. No good there, and that one goes all the way over the backboard. Second time we've seen a call like that tonight. Panhandle State basketball. Well, JB is going zone, or maybe that was a man. Almost got the turnover there, and Near steal there by Ali T. <laughs> Got her hands on it, but went out of bounds. Panhandle keeps possession. Ali T ended up in the stands there. That landed on some of the men's basketball players. Rodriguez wanted the look from three, delayed it though. Steal there by Tara Stevens. They'll take it back down. She looked to get a fast break here. Shot no good, but she draws the foul. She'll go to the line here for a couple. Stevens at the line earlier today, 0 for 1. Can't hit her first. Misses them both, so an 0 for 3 start at the charity stripe. Panhandle now, another opportunity. We'll see what they can do about it. Rodriguez driving side out. Audrain left open from three, and it's in. So after a silent first quarter, Shea Audrain having a really nice second quarter. She's got six. Brought the lead down to 16. Yeah, Jamie's got to be sure to lock her down. Can't just leave her out there. She's knocked down two. Martin over to Stevens. She has it up top, moves over to the right. There's Sarah Williams. Ali Teague. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Pass across down to Teague, right corner. They'll just move it around here. Three pointer there. Nice pass from Stevens. Shot is off the mark by Jordan Martin. Last touch, John Brown. Checking in now for Panhandle State making some substitutions there. They'll bring in Nadia Hayes. Audrain 
She'll go back out, Rodriguez. And another pass off the mark, but they'll say, JB, you got a finger on that. They'll keep possession of it. 19 seconds left on the shot clock. Naomi Rodriguez off the inbound. She'll pass it. Kaylee Morgan couldn't come down with the pass, and that ball's going back to John Brown. Yeah, good defensive possession there for the Golden Eagles. Did not. Uh, I mean, really, the the big thing right now for them is going to be making sure Audrain is not open on the outside. She's kind of heated up a little bit. Stevens inside, back out. Jordan Martin. Just going around here, and she's left open from three. She'll take it. No good. Stevens' offensive rebound. She puts it in. She's got 11, and John Brown, 18-point lead. Yeah, nobody put a body on Tara there. She just came uncontested underneath the basket. Took it and got an uncontested layup, and she's got 11 points. Kaylee Morgan, they answer back there with a the shot of their own. Morgan on the board for the first time tonight. It's the first time we've seen her really shoot, but... A phenomenal, phenomenal point guard. Side Sarah Williams, she'll take it in. Shoots it Ooh. over a couple Aggies. Doesn't draw the foul, though. Drive in, pass back out. And that's a clear and obvious travel there. And Another turnover by the Aggies. Sarah Williams to inbound. It looks like they're going to have Maddie Altman take it up. And neither team has been uh, super careful with the basketball. It's number seven for OPSU. JBU also with seven turnovers. Both teams looking to end the first half of play on a high note here. Fergan drive in. Bad look there. She'll kick it out to Altman. She'll go in. Taylor Fergan from three. Up, oh, no good. Altman offensive rebound. JBU's kind of at a dry spell from long range in the second quarter. Maddie Altman again, drive. Fergan. Tara Stevens, long range three. Don't see her take that shot often. Off the mark there. Panhandle State gets the ball back. Chance to cut down this lead. Not completely out of it, down 16 though. Three point basket up and this time no good. They get the offensive rebound. Panhandle State looking to get something going here. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Audrain has it, Teague covering. Creates her own shot, draws the foul. She's going to the line here for a couple. Allie played great defense on that one right up until the shot, and she reached in just enough to get that foul call. Shea Audrain now going to the line. 73.7% free throw shooter, 28 for 38. She's also their leading scorer on the season, 11.1 points per game. Actually, their only player on the team this season that averages double digits in points. She's got seven now. Gets them both, and it's a 14-point ball game. Panhandle State, they're not out of it. They've had a pretty good second quarter of play here, actually outscoring the Golden Eagles. Fergan. Panhandle State playing some tough defense, not letting them drive inside on them. They get it out to Altman. Fergan back. Sarah Williams from three, it's up and wow, it's back in. Play. So looking to quiet the Panhandle State run. Sarah Williams, she hits that one from long range. She's got 12 leading the way for the John Brown Golden Eagles. This is one of the best iterations of Sarah Williams I can remember. She is shooting so well. She's doing a great job of getting herself open. And she takes the charge. She's doing it on both ends of the floor. Sarah Williams just having a night. Leading the team in points, making a lot of great plays defensively as well as we see it there. That one's going to be on Nadia Hayes. That's her first personal. Just under two minutes left. John Brown looking to head to the half and quite the Panhandle State run. And Fergan, she goes inside, draws the foul. 
Nobody was on her right until the shot. And at that point, Panhandle State didn't have much choice but to send her to the free throw line. Also the fifth team foul, so that will put JBU in the bonus. Fergan now going to the free throw line. Made them both her first trip. We'll see what she can do here. First one in, it kicks things back up. 18 point lead, Fergan. She has five points. Had 15 the other night against Southwestern Christian. Hits them both, it's back up. 19 points, Panhandle State here needing to make a run to head to the half with some confidence and some momentum. Kaylee Morgan looking to get something going here and that pass well off the mark. They're going to say last touch here by John Brown. Kaylee Morgan to inbound from the baseline. 15 seconds to work with on the shot clock. McCaskill drive in. Kaylee Morgan left corner. Three-pointer by Audrain. Tries it again. This time it's no good. Allie Teague with the rebound and Sarah Williams, she has it back again. Kick out, Tara Stevens. Williams drawing something up here. Gets Fergan on the pass. Screen. That frees her up a little bit. She'll just take it back over to Allie Teague. Maddie Altman up top. Allie Teague back inside. Sarah Williams, three-pointer from the right corner. This one no good there. Fergan with a nice offensive rebound. Tipped it up and got it there. They only have 15 seconds left on the shot clock, though. And they haven't really drawn anything up. Stevens on the screen. Fergan, Allie Teague from three. Trying it again there. No good. Rebound. JBU is going to keep possession. So they'll get to try it again. 17.7 second difference between the shot and game clock. This is a crucial defensive possession here for the Aggies. Two the Golden Eagles, I'd say. Feed it to Sarah Williams. Taylor Fergan, she has it. McCaskill covering, she'll drive in. Great it looks defense. like it was blocked by McCaskill. Inside Altman, they don't have a lot of time Ooh. to work with. Stevens for three. No good, and another offensive rebound by Taylor Fergan. She gets blocked again. Wonder how many times OPSU is going to give JBU a shot at this. It was, what was that, three offensive rebounds there? Three or? offensive rebounds, I think a blocked shot or two, so. This has got to be try number five or six for them on this possession alone. OPSU looking to end the half here on a stop. It looks like John Brown going to hold for the last shot. They've had the ball for about the last 45, 50 seconds. And there's Taylor Fergan left open inside, and she'll be going to the line here for a couple. Only 2.1 seconds left, so not a whole lot of time for the Aggies to draw up a play once they get the ball back. Really thought OPSU might get the stop there. They stopped him the first 45 or so seconds of it, just center to the line, though, for the last two. Ori, I thought you were about to say they stopped him the first 45 times there because felt the possession like it. felt like they, JBU had about 45 tries. Finally ends in free throws for Taylor Ferdinand. It's just a, kind of a backbreaker possession for the Aggies. Now they don't have a lot of time to work with. They would have had 15 seconds. Now they just kind of have to chunk it from half court. Audrey. Fire it up. We're not going to get a buzzer beater there, but John Brown going to the half here, 21 point advantage to score 39 to 18. Carter, what are your thoughts here after a very dominant first half of play by the Golden Eagles? Yeah, and Oklahoma Panhandle kind of came on there in that second quarter, played a lot better defensively, but that first quarter for the Golden Eagles, they scored 26 points. They had a bunch of threes. They shot really well. They were making some crisp passes. They were moving the ball really well, getting a lot of touches to a lot of players. And it showed on the scoreboard, 26 points there in that first quarter. And I think for the Golden Eagles, they just got to keep doing what they were, what they did in that first quarter and try to continue that success into the second half. But a good first half of action for the Golden Eagles. Meanwhile, Panhandle State just really struggling offensively. Is the key here really just for them just get the open looks and hit the shots? Yeah, I'd say so. And they played some really good defense there in that second quarter. They limited, I mean, the Golden Eagles only scored 13 in the second quarter compared to that 26 that they scored in the first. So, I mean, if you're Oklahoma Panhandle, really focused on the defensive possession and you got to get the ball 
in the hands of Shea Audrange, she can absolutely shoot. Panhandle State not completely out of it, but they're down 21 at the half. John Brown with a good third quarter can really go a long way in shutting this game down in their favor. We'll take a quick break. I'll come back and do kind of a stats recap of this first half, and maybe preview the men's game coming up in about an hour and a half. Stay tuned, though. You're watching John Brown University basketball here on JBUathletics.com. 39-18 is the score at the half. JBU is on top. to provide basic needs to students. Uh, we have a belief that when basic needs, students have their basic needs met, um, they can focus on the classroom work, focus on how to be successful in school socially. And so we try to meet those needs however we can. A lot of times we do partner with community members, individuals, groups, so we can wrap around our students and make sure they're taken care of. So how important is it for the community and businesses and organizations to get involved with this? Do you have a pretty large budget? We actually operate um, through just direct donation and, and through these types of events with, that we can partner with. And so we rely solely on our partnerships with the community, our individuals who want to actively get involved. And we're meeting needs on almost a daily basis. I, we work closely with school counselors and school nurses and teachers, um, so we kind of have a direct line to know what are the needs that some of our students have and how we can help meet those needs. Okay, so if you remember last week we talked about they had 400 requests for basic needs since September, and the top of that list is underwear. So remember, we're asking for sizes 4T on up through adult, brand new, in their package, underwear that Bright Futures can hand out. And can you give us some idea about what could be happening that causes this need? Sure. I mean, if you think about it, um, there's really just a, a large variety of things that happen where kiddos might have a need that, of that nature. Um, for instance, this fall we had a tornado, so we were able to help out several students who had some basic need requirements. We also have a lot of students in transition, and so they're transitioning maybe um, and into a different home, home structure, and so that causes um, some of those basic needs to be lost and need to be met. Um, we just, even that, you know, sometimes there's spills and things that happen at school, so it's really anything. Anytime we can say, let's make a kiddo comfortable while they're sitting in class, that's what we're trying to do. So if you remember my three C's last week, we want our kids in Salem Springs to be clean, confident, and in class and underwear, having clean underwear or having underwear all together really makes a big difference. So if you can help us out this Saturday by bringing those, the barrels are in the lobby and then the barrels are gonna move to the Walton Life 10 Health Complex. Thank you, Tiffany. We appreciate you, appreciate. Okay, so tonight after the basketball games, we have a special event, our intramural men's and women's championships are going to be held immediately after the varsity games and so we have a three-point contest right now for two females from each of the two teams that are um, competing for the championship tonight and they're going to do a three-point contest right girls all right tell me your name and what team you're from alexis and the soccer girls team soccer girls team and where are you from alexis central arkansas central arkansas and you are Desi Meek. Desi, and where are you from, Desi? Uh, where are you from? Oh, Decatur. Decatur, Arkansas. Okay, who's going first? Is Desi going first? Okay, Desi. You got to make your way around. You get 10 shots, one from each dot, and then go back the other way. So you'll take two shots at the purple dot before you move back this direction. All right? Let's cheer her on. She's going for a free pizza and a free smoothie. Here we go, Desi. You're getting some good warm up time here for tonight's game. You got it. Come on, get excited, Desi. Here we go. Come on, everybody's watching you. Everybody at home on the big screens. There's one. See there? You like pressure, don't you? They're so close. Stay there. Do another one from there. There's two. Nice job, Desi. Here we go. Get this. Coach is watching.
Come on, this is three, Desi, this is three. Come on, you got this one, come on, last shot. There you go, three points. Nice job, Desi. All right, Alexis' turn. Here we go, Alexis. Come on, you gotta beat three. Here we go. You got it, you got it. I thought that one was in, girl. You're so close. Come on, you're getting warmed up. You'll be ready come game time. All right, get this one. You are so close, girl. Come on. Come on, cheer her on, guys. She needs some help. Here we go. Got the bounce. All right, well done, girls. Nice try. Hey, we will see you back again after the games. Desi, I got a free smoothie from our friends at Tropical Smoothie and a free pizza from Pyology. Alexis. I got a BOGO from Pyology for you, all right? Thank you. Welcome back here for the halftime report for this game. Coming up right now, John Brown off to the early advantage over Oklahoma Panhandle State. 39-18 is the score at the half. It was just a dominant first quarter of play by the Golden Eagles. Just came out firing on all cylinders. They actually led the way after a quarter of play, 26-6 by a buzzer-beating three-pointer there. Sarah Williams by, it ended it off right there. Let's get a quick look here at the replay of that play, actually. Just a great, great way to end it off. First quarter of play there by Sarah Williams. She actually led the way in the first half by with 12 points. Score at the half, though. Panhandle State actually the better showing in the second quarter. Only trailed them by one in terms of that quarter, scoring 13 to 12. But at the half right now, John Brown, 39-18 advantage. So... We'll get a quick look here at some of the stats. Right now, John Brown just having a better shooting game overall, 13 for 32, 40%. Panhandle State, meanwhile, just has not been able to get anything going offensively, 7 for 24, 29.1% from the field. JBU shooting 7 for 22, 31.8%. They shot very well from long range in the first quarter, but they did not at all in the second quarter of play. That did allow Panhandle State to have kind of a better showing there defensively. Meanwhile, the Aggies just two for 12 from long range. They're perfect two for two at the line. Meanwhile, JBU six for nine, all three of those misses by Tara Stevens. JBU 22 rebounds to Panhandle State's 14. John Brown also has eight offensive boards. Panhandle State is three. Nine assists for the Golden Eagles, one for the Aggies. Four steals by the Aggies, one by JBU. 12 turnovers by Oklahoma Panhandle State, just not holding onto the ball well at all. And then seven for the Golden Eagles. Two block shots there by the Panhandle State Aggies. Zero for John Brown. Nine team fouls for Panhandle State. Just three in the entire first half by the Golden Eagles. They did a very good job of keeping the Aggies off the free throw line. Panhandle State just had six points off the bench. Three for John Brown. Twelve points in the paint for the Golden Eagles to the eight for Panhandle State. Six second chance points for John Brown off those eight offensive boards. Two for the Oklahoma Panhandle State Aggies. Eight points off turnovers for John Brown and five for Panhandle State. Get a quick look here at the individual leader, Sarah Williams leading the way, 12 points. She had that buzzer beating three-pointer there to end it off in the first quarter. And then just carried it on, carried on the momentum. She's leading the offense right now, four for eight, shooting four for six from three-point range. Right behind her, Tara Stevens, 11 points. After that, you have Taylor Fergan, eight. Marta Matamala, she has five. Ali Teague, she has three. Then you look at the other side of it, Leading the way right now, Shea Audrain, she is eight, and then you have multiple Aggies with two points. But overall, just not a great showing in the first half of play by Oklahoma Panhandle State, but they're still in it. They're still not completely out of it. A good showing here, a big scoring run maybe to start off the third quarter would definitely get them back into the swing of things. 
Because this is a team right now that they do need a win. They may be eliminated from conference tournament contention, but any win, especially a road win at a place like Bill George Arena, would be huge for them, huge for the program, and a way to get momentum into next season. Meanwhile, John Brown, they need to win really badly as well just to stay alive in that conference tournament contention, keep their hopes up. The loser of Langston and Sagu tonight will only be a game ahead of John Brown should the Golden Eels get a win. And it would be, again, huge there. They have three more conference games after this, so they have time to get into the swing of things. They just have to close things out. Score at the half right now, 39-18. Make sure also after, after the conclusion of this game, about 20 minutes after, the men are going to play JB looking to defend their undefeated home record against the Panhandle State Aggies. Panhandle also coming in looking for their first conference win of the season, so it would be a huge upset should it happen. JB also trying to further their seeding potentially for the conference tournament, maybe get a regular season conference title. Also looking to maybe improve their seeding for the national tournament once it comes along right now. They're ranked ninth in the country. That equates to about a three seed in the tournament. But maybe try to break into that two seed. They'll need to win tonight to really kick that off. Anyway, that will conclude our halftime report here. I'm Maury Phillips. We'll come back. Carter Henson will rejoin me on the broadcast. We'll go back on in about two minutes here to bring you the second half of basketball. John Brown leads the way after two, 39-18. Doing things very differently. So we set out to change everything about Christian radio. Cheesiness? Gone. Expectations for perfection? Gone. The same five songs? Gone! Seriously, we just blew it all up and started over. We got real. Real FM is a place for authenticity. We play a mix of alt-pop and hip-hop music. And honest, in-depth conversations about what it means to be a Christian today. Listen today. Listen right now. You can listen Stop now. what you're doing and listen! <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the one. <laughs> Welcome back for the second half of basketball here. John Brown with the lead, 39-18. Looking for a win to stay in contention for a conference tournament spot. Meanwhile, Panhandle State looking to score a road win here late in the year. Down 21. They're not completely out of it, but they need a big third quarter here to get into the swing of things. Matamala to inbound, Sarah Williams, she'll take it up. She led the team in scoring in the first half with 12 points. Taylor Fergan, she now has it. Jordan Martin, Marta Matamala now in the left corner. Taylor Fergan, she'll kick it back out. Williams, they only have seven seconds to work with on the shot clock. Jordan Martin. Williams, not a lot of time, Ooh. and that shot clock is going to expire 
I'm not sure if Sarah Williams knew that she didn't have as much time on the clock, but turnover nonetheless there for John Brown to open things up here in the second half of play. Good job for the Aggies. They get a defensive stop right out of the gate. Really put a lot of pressure on the Golden Eagles in that one. We'll see how Panhandle can answer. Rodriguez drive in. They strike first here in this second half. Not completely out of it. They will need to spark a big run, though. Maybe that's the start of it. Matamala up top over to Fergan on the right. They free up Tara Stevens. Inside, Stevens left open for three up top. She takes it. No good there. We don't see her take those long range shots that often. Naomi Rodriguez wants to take the long shot. She does. No good though. And Panhandle's ice cold night from deep continues. Yeah, OPSU, they've done a really good job of walking down on defense these first two possessions to see if they continue that success. Fergan, she has it in, takes a shot up, gets her own offensive rebound, Look and she gets the end one. Look at Fergan battling for her own board, goes right back up with it after she pulls it down. Having another great game. She's now in double figures, and Fergan now a chance to complete a three-point play. She gets that one to go. Three-point play completed. She's got 11. John Brown up by 22. Screen there. Freeze things up. Kaylee Morgan drive in. She'll kick it back out. Left corner three. McCaskill no good. Rebound, Jordan Martin. Sarah Williams, she wants it over. She has it again, pass inside, Mata Mala. Jordan Martin, she'll take the three. And it's in, so John Brown just having a great night. Shooting the ball right now. They've got a 25-point advantage now. That's Martin's first points on the evening. Three-pointer Naomi Rodriguez. And it's in, so they answer back. And finally, an answer for the Aggies there. Fergan, she'll take it in. Kick out Williams. They leave her open again from long range, and they answer back again. Sarah Williams, 15 points, 25 point advantage for John Brown. And it's been kind of a back and forth, but with the Golden Eagles having the lead they have, it's not a back and forth the Aggies want to engage in. This is one of the, really one of the best games I've seen Sarah Williams put together. That's five threes for her. And then they get a three pointer of their own there for Panhandle State. On the shot is McCaskill, and they want to take a timeout here, real quick. Down 22, but. They still have enough time, I would say, to probably make a comeback here, but they got to get some defensive stops, Carter. Yeah, they just have not been able to really close out any shooters, and JBU's got to give credit the Golden Eagles. They're really moving the ball well, really finding a lot of the open shots, and just there hasn't been much of an answer for, for OPSU on the defensive end. They started this half with a couple of good defensive possessions, but since those first two, JBU really hasn't had a hard time scoring at all. All right, now John Brown. Up 48-26, they need a win to really stay alive here in the conference tournament battle. After this, they got number five, Wayland, on Saturday, and then they got a couple road games next week against Texas Wesleyan and Sagu. So a tough schedule remaining, but if they can get a win here against Panhandle, that would be huge for them. But they still do have to fight off the Aggies. They still got a ways to go to do that is. Panhandle State has shown sometimes with players again like Shea Audrain, if they can take fire, then this is gonna this can be a tough team to stop. We'll see though if Panhandle can pair some defensive stops here with some made baskets. Haven't been able to put it all completely together yet. Inside pass, they get the steal. Actually, that's Kaylee Morgan off the tip pass. She'll take it down. She'll drive and actually kick it. Mid-range jumper up and in. That's Nadia Hayes. She's got. 
her first points of the evening. OPS is playing really well on the offensive end in this half. Just, just cannot seem to get the stops on the defensive end. Another inside feed there to Sarah Williams. Drive back. Kaylee Morgan answers. She's got four. Tara Stevens inside. Taylor Fergan. And another steal there by Panhandle. Trying to make things interesting here. Rodriguez, she'll take the three, right corner, up and in. So wow. now Panhandle State starting to mount a little bit of a comeback. They're still down 17, but really shooting well. They just can't get the stops. Rodriguez, she's got 10 points. Williams has it right corner. She'll drive in, pass out. Jordan Martin, three-pointer up and no good there. Martin's kind of had a rough night shooting the ball. But the Golden Eagles, they still have a 17-point lead, but the Aggies trying to fight hard here. McCaskill, three-pointer. Up, no good. Fergan rebound. She'll take it inside. Draws another foul. That's one thing Taylor Fergan just does a great job of, drawing the contact, getting to the free throw line. She's a pretty good free throw shooter at that, so she gets a lot of her offensive production off of those Free throws, drawing the contact, getting to the line. Looks like they're going to bring in Allie Teague for Jordan Martin. Fergan, a perfect seven for seven at the free throw line. Doesn't get that one to fall, her first miss of the evening. Panhandle State still very much in this thing with five minutes left in the third. Pass in, shoots it over Tara Stevens, it's in. 15 point ball game. It looks like Coach Sardiquist wants to talk things over, not happy with what he's seeing. And he's fired up right now, but what do they need to do to really counter these girls? Yeah, really already. I mean, OPSU's just hitting some shots. JB's not playing too bad on the defensive end. But OPSU on offense, just playing a little bit better. They're knocking their shots down. They're finding the openings. And whatever they talked about at halftime must have really drilled something into their heads to kind of figure this out for them. They had 12 turnovers in the first half, just weren't really dominant in the passing lanes. But now they're really starting to take control. And they've got it down to a 15-point game. Still a lot of work to do, but there's a little bit of hope there for the Aggies. JB right now just needs to clamp down again. We'll see what they can do here. Fergan takes it across the timeline. We're back underway off the timeout. Maddie Altman freed up. Tara Stevens doesn't take the three. She drives in. I think they're going to hit Oklahoma Panhandle State there with the blocking foul. That's going to be on number five, Vanessa Gonzalez. Tara Stevens now going to the free throw line. Hits her first. That's her fourth attempt of the night, but it's her first made free throw. Hits them both that time around. She's got 13. And now Panhandle State has a little more ground to make up. Drive inside, they can't get the shot to fall. Rebound, Ali Teague. She sets the screen. Fergan, and now it's Tara Stevens. Back in Ali Teague and uh, Morgan there tried to sell the contact. Instead, it results in Allie Teague two-pointer. And that's going to be a foul. We'll see who the call's on. That's going to send 
A Penn Hill State Aggie to the line. It's going to be Kaylee Morgan going. They're going to put it on Fergan. That's her second of the game. Kaylee Morgan going to the free throw line. A 57.1% free throw shooter. 24 for 42 on the season going in. High arcing free throw. Knocks down the first. She hits them both, and now it looks like Panhandle State's leaving some players in the backcourt, going with the press. They get it back up the court here. Fergan has it at the logo. She'll take it in, and nobody there to nice. stop her. She got right by Naomi Rodriguez, opened up the shot. She's got 13. First step, first step is just so quick. Moves it so quickly. Gonzalez goes inside. They get that one. It's a fall for them, but they've been able to get the stops. Fergan almost lost her handle on the ball there. She recovers, though. And John Brown's back in business inside Tara Stevens. And JBU to inbound from the baseline. That's going to be on number 32, Hannah Bennett. Said she pushed Tara Stevens there. Meanwhile, Stevens goes out of the game. Haley James will come in. Inside James, Bennett covering, shoots it over, gets it to go. So now John Brown back up 19 point lead and that Panhandle State comeback is largely in jeopardy. Morgan shoots it, no good. John Brown can kick things back up to 20 plus points. Inside feed, Taylor Fergus, she'll kick it back out, James. Ali Teague now has it on the left side. Fergan up top, 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Haley James goes in, two straight possessions, balls in her hands as she makes the basket. She heated up last Saturday at the end of the third quarter as well. Three-pointer by McCaskill, no good. Rebound oh. there by Bennett and left open there. Had a chance for the layup, can't get it to go. Missed opportunity there for the Aggies. Three-pointer Alley T. Off the mark, Haley James gets the offensive board. Just under two minutes left in the third. Side to James and Panhandle State, they get the steal. They'll take it back down. Morgan trying to drive in, do it herself. Doesn't get it, Bennett. She'll go with the line with the chance here for a three-point play. That's going to be on Matamala. Yeah, by Bennett, that's her first basket of the game. She's done some boards. She's fought in there. So she ended up with a three-point opportunity. Bennett, one of the team's role players here. Played in 26 games, started a few as well. She gets the three-point play. Panhandle State here brings in Skylar Clevenger. No, that was... Sarah Williams now, she'll take it up. Had a quieter third quarter in comparison to her first half, but still has 17 leading the team. Jessica Goldman now, the freshman inside. Maddie Altman looking for the shot. She gets one up. Lingers around, does not fall in favor of the Golden Eagles, though. Panhandle State taking it back down. McCaskill takes it across. Audrain over to Morgan. Williams covering. Three-point basket up, and it goes in there on the shot. That's number five, Vanessa Gonzalez. She's got seven points. You know, OPSU gets a stop and another bucket. They've cut this thing to 15. They can cut it even lower. Goldman, about a 22 second difference between the shot and game clock. 
Haley James back out. Sarah Williams, how about another three-pointer from her? This time it's no good. Allie Teague, though, gets in offensive rebound, and ball goes off on Gonzalez. JBU gets another shot at things. Goldman to inbound on the sideline. 6.8 second difference between the shot and game clock. Altman shot no good. Big possession here for Panhandle. Surprised we didn't see JBU take it down even further. Morgan tries to get in. They cannot get that one to go, so JBU likely going to take the last shot of this quarter. Yeah, I might have rushed that one a little bit. Goldman. She'll take it off balance. And the score after three, 15 point lead in favor of John Brown, 60 to 45. So the Aggies not completely out of it. They still stayed within a reasonable margin, but they still have a lot of work to do. Yeah, Ori, so not actually completely over. They're, they're only down by 15 and they shot really well in that quarter. And have they been able to finish with another bucket right there at the end? I'd say they're right in this game. They got 10 minutes to erase a 15-point deficit. It's going to take a really good quarter from them, but it is possible for the Aggies. Definitely is possible. If you're the Aggies right now, who do you really want to get going? We saw a great first half there by Shea Audrain, but she went really silent in that third quarter. Is there possibly somebody else? I mean, we've seen Vanessa Gonzalez hit some shots. Kaylee Morgan's been unafraid to go inside, do it herself against some of the JB's better defenders. What direction do they look to, though, to lead this comeback? Well, I mean, Vanessa Gonzalez, you mentioned, uh, or excuse me, had a few others that were really well. Naomi Rodriguez shot really well. Um, I mean, really, they have several players that have been shooting pretty well. Rodriguez shot well in that third half or third quarter, so I'd keep going back to her. And honestly, Audrain is a great shooter, so you might see the ball in her hands a lot. Panhandle State does have some capable options still within reach to maybe claim that first conference win of the season. But John Brown right now, all it takes probably is a scoring run to close things out and stay alive here. Again, the loser of today's Langston Sagu game will only be one game ahead of John Brown should they close things out. Right now, the score of that one's 50 to 48 in favor of Langston with 422 left in the third. So still anybody's ball game there, but right now the Golden Eagles focusing on handling business. Closing this one, Aggies though looking to fight hard. Three-pointer up, does not go, and that would have been huge. Good offensive possession. They got the shot they wanted. Maddie Altman passes out. Goldman left open, left side. Three-pointer, no good. Rebound by McCaskill. They'll take it down there quite quickly. Intercepted by Haley James. And another missed opportunity there for Panhandle State. Now Panhandle taking it back down. McCaskill drive, pass back out. There's Audrain, their leading scorer. She'll go in, tries to take it. She does, and it's a 13-point lead in favor of John Brown, but that's the closest it's been in a long time. Aggie's not out of this one. Haley James, she has it. Pass over, Williams up top, over to Goldman. Haley James looking to get things going here. Tara Stevens, only eight seconds left on the shot clock. Goldman takes another three. Wow. This time it goes, and John Brown now giving Panhandle some more work to do. That was a patient possession for the Golden Eagles, and finally it ended up in the hands of Jessica Goldman, who was wide open on the outside. Now Panhandle looking. McCaskill has it, James covering her. There's Naomi Rodriguez, pass back out, Audrain. They have Jessica Goldman on her, she frees up. Can't get the shot to fall. Got a hand on it for a potential offensive board, but Sarah Williams recovers it. Tara Stevens. She'll draw the foul, get another chance here at the line to complete a three-point play. And right now, though, that just looks like a clear mismatch. They're having Kaylee Morgan cover Stevens, and really all they've had Morgan do is just try to draw contact and maybe attempt to charge there. 
Stevens now a chance to complete a three-point play. Struggled at the line early on, missed her first three. She since made her last two. Doesn't get that one. And now Oklahoma Panhandle State starting to run out of time. They're going to send McCaskill to the line. They're going to get that one on Haley James. Now Kasha McCaskill going to the free throw line. Gets her second one to go. It's 16 point game, John Brown. Panhandle State needing to make up some ground and running out of time to do it. Inside James. She'll take it, shoots it. No good there. McCaskill, corner, three pointer by Vanessa Gonzalez is no good. That would have been huge for the. Aggies that had that gone in. Altman pass over. Drive in, Stevens, right corner three. Up off the mark. There's been kind of a lid over the rim these last couple possessions for both teams. Yeah, Ori, JBU's left it open for Panhandle. Panhandle just hasn't been able to capitalize on the offensive side. We're seeing a lot of fast break, or fast pace possessions, I should say, that aren't ending in made baskets. Tara Stevens, McCaskill covering, makes no difference. Tara Stevens gets that one. She's got 17 points, tying her for Sarah Williams with the team lead. Another great night offensively by her. Drive in, inside pass, but JBU gets a body on her quickly. Shot off the mark. On that shot was number 20, Skylar Clevenger. Sarah Williams up top over to Altman. And Tara Stevens frees things up here, but they're going to get Panhandle State there on the foul. Number 14, Kasha McCaskill. She'll head out of the game now. They'll bring back in Shea Audrain. Six minutes left. JBU commanding lead. Maddie Altman drive in. Man. Cannot get the shot, though, from close range. The teams are really struggling to get the ball in the hoop in this, this quarter. Three-pointer by Audrain is in. You heard me talking about her. And big three-point basket there by Shea Audrain. She's now got 13, looking to come alive here in this fourth quarter. 15-point deficit, still very daunting task there for Panhandle State. If you're John Brown, though, what is the strategy here to really close things out? Because surely all it takes is a couple minutes to hold this score at 15, possibly. I mean, get it down to three minutes left if they're up by 15. Panhandle's not coming back. Yeah, or, uh, I mean, the Golden Eagles, this game's probably over. There's 5.45 to go. 15 points is a pretty big deficit in that time. A basket or two probably ends this thing, definitely ends this thing for the Golden Eagles. So they just got to figure out uh, how to get the ball in the hoop right now. They're really just, there's a bit of lit over it for the last few minutes for JBU. And, but lucky for them, Panhandle has not been capitalizing on the, offen the offensive end. Both teams shooting above their season average from the floor, but still been a very streaky night for both teams. As again, as you said, John Brown just hasn't gotten a whole lot going offensively these last couple minutes. We'll see what they can do here though on the court. For John Brown is Sarah Williams, Maddie Altman, Haley James, Tara Stevens, and Jordan Martin. Williams to inbound it. Looks like Panhandle State's leaving a couple Aggies back. Trying to get a turnover. They get one. Audrain back in. She gets it to go. Aggies cutting this lead down. Successful press there. A lot of pressure on the ball right now. Oh, and another one, get another, another one. turnover there for Panhandle State. Things looking quite interesting here. Audrain, she wants it, she gets it inside, shoots it over Stevens. 
doesn't get it to fall. I think they feel the urgency, but they're rushing their shots a little bit. They get it down the court this time. Third time's a charm there against that Panhandle State press. Matty Altman now. Only four seconds left on the shot clock. They've got to get a shot really quickly. Haley James takes it. She gets it there as the shot clock expires and back up to 15, just under five left. Now these are the kinds of possessions the Golden Eagles need to really close this game out. Long possessions that end with a basket. And with that missed three, things looking pretty dire for Panhandle State. Haley James says it looks like John Brown's just trying to kill some time here. Interception there, that's by Clevenger. Aggie's taking it back down, three-pointer right corner there. It's up and in there by Naomi Rodriguez. She's got 13 and 12-point deficit there for the Aggies. Just under four minutes left. It would take a huge run, but they're not going away. Yeah, or really, no matter how this game ends, hat off to Panhandle State. They came in here, they had a rough start to the game. They have really put in a complete effort here in the second half. It might, they're still down by 12. It might not end in their favor, but there are some positive things for them to take from this one. Make sure also after the conclusion of this one, tune in for the men's game. John Brown looking to defend their undefeated home record. The latest top 25 polls actually came out. They did not move up, and he stayed at number nine. Behind Mac Hughes, number two. Sagu moved up there, 13. Texas Wesley moved back to number 23. So a lot of movement there as we get into the last couple weeks. That kicks off here. Another near turnover by John Brown. Gonzalez had it. But again, that game there, the men will tip off about 20, 25 minutes after the conclusion of this one. Huh? Yeah. John Brown looking to close things out here. Or the end of the men's season is going to be, oh, what a shot. Three-point basket up and in by Taylor Fergan. Kicks things back up, and that just might do it for Panhandle if they can't get a shot. Yeah, or the JBU men, they really tough into their season. They get Wayland Saturday. They have to go on the road to play Texas Wesleyan and Sad U next week. And Wayland Baptist, the team receiving votes actually for the top 25. They've been on a bit of a run lately. I think they've won, what, their last three or so. They play Bacona Knights. So that's probably going to be four in a row for them. So that's going to be a red hot Wayland Baptist team. They box out. They got Fergan covered. We'll see. I think Coach Sardiquist may have called a timeout there. He had something to give, so he uses it there. But yeah, John Brown, the men's team right now, just a tough last couple of weeks because next week they got two road games against a couple ranked teams. Then you got the conference tournament. These next couple weeks could be the difference of whether JBU is a two seed in the national tournament or if they fall to something more along the lines of a five or a six. Anything can happen. Panhandle State, though, coming in, the men looking for their first conference win. They'll be fired up, I'm sure, ready to go. Right now, John Brown trying to close this one out. They're up 15. Big games by Sarah Williams and Tara Stevens, as well as Taylor Fergan. Williams and Stevens each have 17. Fergan with 16. Just a great night overall for all three of them. Now, one of the best performances we've seen Sarah Williams really put together in a while. I mean, 17 points for her, five threes. I mean, JV is a team, 11, 11 baskets from downtown. They looked really good on the offensive end for the most part. Especially, I mean, it was that first quarter that really has done it for the Golden Eagles. 26 points in the first quarter. Over a third of their scoring came in that, in that first quarter. 26 to six was a score at the end of that one. And the Aggies, they put, up, put together a pretty competent game after that, but it, deficit looks to be too much to overcome. Martin, corner three. Up, oh, no good. She said kind of a rough night shooting wise. Panhandle State will get the ball back here. Just under three minutes left. Fergan will get charged with the foul. That's her third personal. And if John Brown can go out, finish this one off, and win this, this would be huge for them right now. Uh, loser of Sagu Langston, they'll only be a game 
back from them. It's all tied up, actually, 57 all in that one. Rodriguez drive in, loses her handle on the ball. They will keep possession, though. They'll say last touch on the Golden Eagles. That will go out to McCaskill, Ali T covering inside pass. JBU, they get the turnover. Sarah Williams taking it down. Allie Teague, pass out. Tara Stevens wide open in the left corner. Three-pointer up and in. And if it wasn't already over, that one capped it off. Yeah, great job again. They draw everybody inside, fire it back out to Tara in the corner. She's wide open and she doesn't miss. Great play for the Golden Eagles. And Stevens really trying to develop that long shot. She leads the team with 20 points inside there by Clevenger, but... Looks like Panhandle State will take the time out here. Game well in hand for John Brown, though. They're up by 16 with just over two minutes left. And right now, just looking at that Langston Sagu game, that game could go a long way in determining where JBU's at. There'll be a game back from the loser of this one. It's tied up 57 57. I mean, if you're a Golden Eagle fan, you probably want Sagu to drop that one since JBU actually will be playing the Lions on the road next week. So if they do beat Sagu on the road, then things would get very interesting. But either way, I mean, a big win for John Brown. And this is a team that they just haven't had a whole lot go their way in conference. They've dropped some close games. They've had some games played by bad shooting. But to go in here and get another win, this would be huge for that Golden Eagle team. They got Wayland on Saturday. That's going to be a tough test. Their only loss on the season in conference play, at least, is to OCU. Sarah Williams has it. They'll look to just take some time off here. Allie T, she goes in and gets the shot. Minute 45 left. T having a nice night offensively for herself. Seven points on the board. Inside drive. Jordan Martin left open. They're going to get her on the travel. Vanessa Gonzalez comes back in for Clevenger. Some last minute substitutions here for Panhandle State. McCaskill, Teague covering. She'll go in, gets it. She draws the foul. She'll go to the line for a couple. That's to be on Allie Teague. That's her second. And Panhandle State right now, they played a pretty good game after that first quarter. Made things a bit interesting here to start off the fourth. Got it within about 12 or so, but JBU able to keep their distance. After this, they got Bacone on the road on the 22nd. That's on Saturday. And then next week, they close off their season with Southwestern Christian and Oklahoma City at home. So they got a couple more chances after this one to get a conference win. Southwestern Christian, they came to build George last weekend and took the win. It was a close one, though, only a four-point game there. And Orion some made free throws. Could have. Potentially swung that game for the Golden Eagles. Yeah, that one got very interesting at the end. There are a bunch of free throws in just like the last three seconds of that one. I think you said, what, what was it you said, Ori? The last three seconds took about five minutes to play or just very something hectic. along those lines. In both the JBU men's and women's games, the last minute was just took a long time to finish, especially for the men's game when they were ahead by about 17. Late turnover there by John Brown. Drive in. Kaylee Morgan will go to the line for a couple. Williams will get hit with the foul. That's only her first, but another a great night by Sarah Williams going in. She averaged, what, about six points per game? Tonight, 17. Great performance by her. And Morgan, she hits that one. She is 
Seven could make it eight. And that one goes in. Morgan with eight. Looks like John Brown going to take a timeout here, likely to just discuss strategy to close things off. All they need to do is really kind of dribble it out from here. Again, make sure after inclusion of this one, don't miss the men's game. It'll, I assume it'll tip off about 30 minutes from now, 20, 25 minutes after the inclusion of the women's game. And John Brown undefeated at home. After today, Wayland is the only other team that can get a chance to upset them in the regular season. And first, we got Panhandle State. They're looking to really kind of reverse their fortunes on the year. Winless in conference play. They're 4-21 overall. They played Wayland actually the other night. Only lost that one by nine points. Yeah, or they haven't been blown out in any of their last three games. They've played within 10 in all three of them. And, you know, as JBU learned in their trip to Caragool to play against Crowley's Ridge early in the season, you do not underestimate anyone. And I think uh, they'll come in mentally focused, ready to play some ball. Right now, John Brown again just Still potentially alive there for a regular season conference title. Mac, you've got to lose some for that to happen. But even then, the Golden Eagles still looking to maybe improve their seating in Kansas City right now. They're virtually locks, I'd say. But even then, don't know where they'd be ranked and don't know who they'd be playing. They want to definitely make the picture better for them. And a win tonight would be huge for them there. Morgan will get hit with the foul. Panhandle State trying to force a late turnover, over, it appears. Not going to let John Brown just dribble things out. And they're going to foul. Looked like they got just a little tied up there. That one again on Morgan. That's her third. Two of her three fouls coming in about a span of five seconds. And Allie Tig just left wide open there. Gets that one to fall. Teague, nine points. John Brown, 79 as a unit. Morgan trying to set up a play here. Audrain for three in the corner. No good there. And that will do it. So John Brown getting a much-needed win here at home against Oklahoma Panhandle State. They complete the sweep of the Aggies. John Brown takes the win. A much-needed one there, as I said. Final here, 79-62 with the win. John Brown goes to 9-17 on the season. 5-12 in conference with the lost Aggies fall. 5-22, 0-18. They got a couple more chances left on this season to get a conference win. But Carter, just a great win for John Brown. What are your thoughts? Yeah, you know, Ori, the Golden Eagles just did not let off the gas there. They played really hard the whole time. Again, just what an unbelievable start to the game. They had 26 points in the first quarter. They didn't let up after that. OPSU went on a few runs and had a few players individually play really hard. There's a good stat for you, though. 19 assists for the Golden Eagles tonight. They really shared the ball, really moved the ball around. Let me just look at the board. 20 points from one player, 17, 16. Balanced scoring, good attack, great win for the Golden Eagles. John Brown, they take a win here, commanding 17-point win there, 79-62. But after this, they got Wayland on Saturday in a couple road games next week. What has to be the mindset there? They're not out of it, but they they have one of the tougher schedules to close out the season. Yes, I do. It's definitely a winnable game next week. I, I'd say uh, Wesleyan's a winnable game for the Golden Eagles next week. Wayland's going to be a very, very tough test. Absolutely. I mean, that's one of the most dominant women's basketball programs. I mean, in history, their women's basketball programs in the National Basketball Hall of Fame. That's a tough road game, especially down in, or rather, that's here, excuse me. They've already played in Plainview. They do have a road trip to Texas next week in which they'll play. I mean, two winnable games, but still road games. I think they can do this thing. They can get into that eight seed. They can get to the tournament. I believe in the Golden Eagles, and this is a good start. And with the win, they will move within one game of the loser of Langston Sago. That game's still too close to call. Lions have the advantage over the – well, Langston is the advantage, I should say, over Sagu. 67-65. <laughs> the Lions versus the Lions. Yeah, Lions over the Lions right now. That one, again, too close to call. I'll report the final when we have it. But – Still a big win there. Final score again for John Brown, 79-62. They take the win. I'll talk with Coach Sardaquist after the break, and then we'll transition here and get ready for the men's game.
We knew that trying to start a new Christian radio station today would require doing things very differently. So we set out to change everything about Christian radio. Cheesiness? Gone. Expectations for perfection? Gone. The same five songs? Gone! Seriously, we just blew it all up and started over. We got real. Real FM is a place for authenticity. We play a mix of alt-pop and hip-hop music. And honest, in-depth conversations about what it means to be a Christian today. Listen today. Listen right now. You can listen Stop now. what you're doing and listen! <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the one. <laughs>
All right, thanks, Coach. The final here, 79-62. Stay tuned for the men's game coming up, but the women take the first one. We'll be right back in about 10 minutes to bring you the Jean Brown men's game as they look to defend their undefeated record at home.